Hi, my name's Peter Coffin, and how dare you drink Coke Zero before the Palestine protest? Tut tut, leftist. How could you do such an awful thing? So Hassan Piker got a little IRL wake-up call about fandom and consumption as activism. Originally I just got the squid, but... Hassan Piker went down to Australia, mate, to say no to Israel. No, Israel, I'm not sharing my semi with you. In a bit, you want that semi real bad, Israel. It's got Vegemite all over it. But yeah, he's in Australia with this guy. I want to see the squid, though. Well, I don't know who it is, so don't ask me if he's cool or not. I, I really can't tell you. Oh, what? That looks awesome. But he's there for a pro-Palestine protest. This clip is of, of them on their way there, live streaming, and they encounter a fan. Oh my god, you got the shirt she and everything. The this wasn't, this wasn't oh. We've been trying to make our way, but someone had to get fucking squid. <laughs> I'm gonna try it on. Are you a secret Zionist? Oh, very outwardly. <laughs> <laughs> so out of the gate, she tries to show she's cool with a joke, ribbing the guy for being a Zionist for holding them up on the way to the protest, because he wanted that squid. So anyway, they all take a photo together. Hell yeah. Thank you. And she's on her way. However, at some point, on the way to wherever she was going, she remembered something important. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, I That's forgot really to well say, you need to stop drinking Three, Coke Zero two, on stream. Why? It's boycott. Wait, is it? You're uh, preaching pro-Palestine, and you're uh, drinking all this boycott stuff. Please, Hassan, <laughs> at least pretend. Do it off stream. Uh, okay, Please, okay, I'll, put in, I'll put in a glass. <laughs> <laughs> is Pepsi okay? No! No, Pepsi's of course not okay. Trying to stop him, isn't that? <laughs> <laughs> he hosted him in his home and I watched him on stream drink Coke Zero. Yeah, yeah, it's we, your we... house, you get to say no. It's your house, you have to say no! <laughs> well, Shaitan and Shaitan's agent, go, go to the protest. Okay, have a good one. Hassan, as somebody who seems to exist in the world and interacts with people should understand you coming up to me and saying stop drinking coke zero it's boycott it makes people look at you like you're crazy the correct answer to some random on the street telling you that you shouldn't drink coke zero anymore is of course no that is how he should have responded it's not how he responded uh instead it's completely right no. damn he unfortunately capitulated to it. I mean, you can tell on his face that he thinks, uh, wow, fuck this. But he knows that his fan base is on that person's side. And so does everybody else there as they walk away saying she was right. Completely right. Oh. Damn. So if you've watched my channel and all, you know that I'm not a big fan of consumption as activism. Firstly, because demand does not drive supply. The market doesn't just respond to what you ask it to do. We have been told it has, but instead, the way things work in large-scale industry is supply is created and demand is marketed into existence so that supply can be consumed. The marketplace of ideas does not work differently. But the other thing that keeps this in my craw is that protest should be done for one of two reasons. The first, to educate. The second, to disrupt. A lot of people like to make the argument that uh, holding people up or telling them what they're consuming is wrong educates them. It snaps them out of it. Which, no, it doesn't. They don't know the protesters, so what they're saying doesn't mean anything to them. They could be lying for all they know. And in the case of when they're like holding up traffic or something, they're certainly inconveniencing normal people. Which, disruption uh, is the second purpose that you'd want to protest for, but why would you want to disrupt the working class? Again, some claim that it educates people, snaps them out of it, but I would say no, that is not the case. Uh, what you would really want to disrupt is the flow of production, meaning you'd want to disrupt the ruling class. You don't do that by holding up the subordinate class. And so that brings us to the not K-pop band BDS. BDS stands for Boycott Divestment Sanctions. Um, now that sounds like three things, but principally speaking, most of the time, Boycott's really the only thing that BDS is involved in. Divestment is something that Capital does, and they're not too sympathetic to radical protest movements usually. And sanctions are something that the state does, which also the same. They don't love radical protest movements. And so what is a boycott? Well, 
it, it's consumption is activism. And this isn't how it's being spun, but McDonald's has called BDS's bluff. Recently, British state media put out this article called McDonald's Hit by Israel-Gaza Misinformation. In it, McDonald's said it was seeing a meaningful hit to business as customers in the Middle East boycott the firm for its perceived support of Israel. Several markets in the Middle East and some outside the region are experiencing a meaningful business impact due to the war and associated misinformation that is affecting brands like McDonald's. This is disheartening and ill-founded, he added, as though these circumstances were totally unexpected. So let's talk about why McDonald's is seeing less business in the Middle East as a war flares up. Oh right, I don't have to say Word one beyond that. McDonald's, which the U.S. state flag might as well be the Golden Arches, has seen a decline in sales in the Middle East since the Israel-Palestine conflict escalated. Duh! This is where it really starts to get obvious, though. BDS didn't even mention McDonald's until McDonald's sued them. The pro-Palestinian Boycott Divestment Sanctions, BDS, which had not formally targeted McDonald's, this week officially called for a boycott of the brand. The move came after McDonald's Malaysia, which is backed by a Saudi firm, sued the Malaysian BDS group for $1.3 million, citing false and derogatory statements that it said hurt its business. So again, uh, BDS had not formally targeted McDonald's, which backs up everything I just said about the numbers having nothing to do with BDS. BDS did ramp up after being sued. We cannot let this pass. Let's show McDonald's what grassroots boycotts can do. The lawsuit essentially is attributing their decline in sales, which happened, I would argue, pretty naturally given the conditions, on BDS for boycotting them over the war, which BDS just decided hey, let's do that. Let's do the thing they're suing us for. We weren't doing it before, but now that we could lose $1.3 million, now, now let's do that. Let's show those McDonald's bastards what grassroots boycotts can really do. Which says to me that for credibility, BDS is more than happy to give up $1.3 million. In fact, this lawsuit kind of gives everybody exactly what they want. McDonald's has an excuse for bad numbers, and BDS has a big corporate overlord coming down on them. BDS could admit that it is ineffective and has nothing to do with McDonald's numbers, thus totally nullifying the lawsuit. But hey, if McDonald's only wants $1.3 million to verify the fact that we are against Western capitalism, that we're truly doing something... Well, maybe that's worth $1.3 million. What I'm saying is all this is nonsense. It's fake. And while I technically agree with BDS, let me just say I'm more annoyed with them than I am with McDonald's. I'm more annoyed with Hassan Piker for cultivating an audience that thinks that drinking soda harms Palestine. It's really, really obvious why a big Western company isn't doing as well in a region that's completely sympathetic to one side of an armed conflict, and in many cases is ravaged by similar armed conflicts that are ultimately connected to big Western governments. Like, no shit McDonald's is doing less well in the region. I have zero doubt that's true. Which is, by the way, the same number of calories in a Coke Zero. Mmm, they did not pay me to do that. They should have, but they didn't. Ultimately, this whole thing is tied up in fandom, though. Fandom seems to be the primary mode by which anybody wants to express any kind of grievance or take any kind of action. It's all about consumer advocacy and demonstrating a demand so the market can acquiesce. My identity is tied up in Hassan, and I am in community with him. Uh... However, the pro-Palestine protesters, the BDS, say that we shouldn't consume a certain type of thing. And Hassan Piker does. I am frustrated with being on these folks' side. 
I hate when you're on my side. I agree with them about Palestine, of course. Uh, Israel is a satellite state and the outpost for Western oppression in the Middle East. But not drinking Coca-Cola and having Big Macs, that's not going to change shit. I mean, actually, if you tell somebody that they shouldn't do those things, uh, it might change their mind on the Palestine conflict. They might go, ah, you know, that sounds insane because I know that what I eat doesn't change anything here. And then these people go, ah, you bootlicking fascists. Of course you would keep eating Big Macs and drinking Coca-Cola. You're a fascist. Blah. Again, I'm going to say this. Uh, it's important to, to build power through organizations and relationships and community, genuine community, not fandom. Fandom is community as a commodity. It puts you in a competitive community with other people consuming a thing, and you're all supposed to demonstrate how much you like the thing. That's not really community. It's just really clever marketing. I'm not claiming to have the answer. Um, I'm a member of a, an organization called CPI, and I would recommend looking into them. Uh, I'll link them in the description. But building power through relationships and connections, um, it's a path to an answer. It's not the answer itself. And it would be nice if we would take even one step in that direction. As it stands, though, it seems like we are continually taking zero steps. The same number of steps as there are calories in Coke Zero. That's all I have for you today. Uh, lick all those buttons underneath. Give them a nice big slurp. Become a subscriber. And don't forget to money me at patreon.com slash Peter Coffin. I hope you have a good day and a Big Mac. Bye.